Hey, hello, it's Andrea, and today is Tuesday in February of 2020. I don't know what day it is, I think it's the 11th, but who cares, right? <laughs> Unless it's your birthday, then I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm so worn out. I had a long day yesterday. I had to do... Sorry if my car is loud. I guess the temperature is getting to it. I had a... I had to go do some family stuff that I can't go into, but... I will say this. Uh, have you ever had to drive on the boulevard? And by the boulevard, I mean... Roosevelt Boulevard in northeastern Philadelphia. If you have not, then count yourself lucky, because that place is a hellhole. It is a nightmare to drive, especially at rush hour, which is, there's no rushing happening there. They shut down part of it. I don't know if you know, there's like an inner part and an outer part. And Ugh, I don't even want to talk about it. How long I was on that road for just a short, for less than a mile stretch. You don't even want to know. You don't want to know. So. Yeah, I was so busy yesterday, I didn't have time to make a video, so I apologize for that. But you could have this bright, cheerful video today. <laughs> we all have our, we all have our ups and downs, right? I'm just wait I'm waiting for my son to be ready to go to work. So I'm sitting in the car waiting for him. And uh Yeah. So on the weekend I went Bob and I went with his sister and his sister's husband and we went and saw The Gentleman, which is a Guy Ritchie movie. And I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty interesting. I really don't know how to describe it other than, okay, it's set in somewhere in England. I mean, I wasn't paying that much attention to where in England because you're paying more attention to the dialogue and the interesting things that are going on. But um, there's different drug empires involved and kind of like fighting between them. It's got Matthew McConaughey, and it's got the guy from, uh, I can't think of what it's called. There was like, there was like this TV show that had motorcycle, a motorcycle club on it, in it. It was like a retelling of Hamlet. It has the main guy from that, and it had Colin Farrell. Oh, here comes my son. I'll get back on. I'm back. So also in that movie is, I can't remember the guy's first name, but he's a British actor and his last name is Marsden. And he's been in a bunch of things, like he's been in um, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, yeah, I can't think of what else. I've seen him in TV shows because I've watched a lot of British, I've watched a lot of British shows. I'm not good with accents. Well, I will slightly entertain you. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know what's a good show to watch lately. What's a good show? I found this one. I found this one today on... What is that called? Amazon Prime. And it was like... I forget what it was called, but it was this thing. It's this thing where they're experimenting with people who are... Um, they're, they're getting benefits, they're getting, uh, you know, in England, I guess if you, if you don't make enough money, you can go on benefits, kind of like we have welfare here, and, um, there was a one family that they get on their, on their benefits program, they get $200 every two weeks, $200 every two weeks. Oh my goodness. So anyway, they've got barely enough money to pay their bills and then they're supposed to, they're trying to find jobs at the same time and stuff. So they're doing this experiment. I cannot remember the name of the show, but if I remember it, I'll put it in the links below. Oh, and I'll also put a link to the trailer for The Gentleman, that movie I was talking about. But anyway, back to this TV show. They give them, this experiment, they give them $27,000 
dollars in one lump sum, but they have to sign off of the benefits. And that's the only that's the only um, criteria is that you have to sign off the benefits. So to get that one lump sum. And they're seeing if, you know, will some of the people change their lives for the better or are they just gonna buy a bunch of stuff? I don't know, but they said that this this kind of thing has worked in other countries. I think it's interesting. I've only watched one episode so far, so they haven't really gotten to the part where you see how they do with it. And in a way, I think it's it's kind of like some kind of sad circus in the first part because you're seeing people that don't have a lot of money and they get very excited because they get twenty seven thousand dollars. And, uh, you know, finally they can get their hair cut or they can go out to eat for the first time in years. Like, they're, but going out to eat is like going to a Chinese buffet or something. So it's kind of, um, I don't know. I just feel like with a lot of these reality shows, they turn people's lives into a circus, you know. But the part that I'm interested in is I want to see how do they, are they able to, Get, you know, get the jobs that they need or whatever, get the kind of jobs that they want to try and get ahead, you know. Um, yeah. I know what it's like to, to not have enough money to pay for anything, you know. It, it was like that when our kids were really young, so it's like you can barely pay the bills. And then you gotta buy groceries and stuff. You gotta keep everybody healthy. You know? You gotta try to keep everybody healthy. And there's nothing. There's nothing extra. There's people that live like that. You know? And it's, uh, it's depressing. It can be depressing for you because it doesn't seem like anything. Listen, this is turning into a depressing episode. <laughs> I told you I'm worn out. <laughs> But it wears on you, you know, when you, when no matter what you do, you can't, you can't even get a tiny step ahead. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll just stick to watching YouTube videos, because it's hard to find stuff that's not depressing. Maybe I'm just drawn to depressing stuff. I don't know what I'm making for dinner tonight. I might make this, there's this chicken meal that we make that we learned from somebody when Bob was in the Air Force. It's like, you take chicken breast and you cook it and you cut it up and you put it in a casserole dish with cooked spaghetti and cut up cheese, which we usually use cheddar cheese, um, a can or two of cream of mushroom soup and a can or two of uh, Rotel, which Rotel is a brand name of this stuff that's like chopped tomatoes, diced tomatoes, whatever, and diced peppers. Like, I don't know if they're jalapenos or whatever, but they're not really spicy. So, you could just, you could just do it with diced tomatoes if you want. Mix it, you mix it all together and you put it in the oven and it's a casserole. And then when you, when it comes out, you cut it because spaghetti is all on, you know. I guess you could break up the spaghetti. Bob said he's been having a craving for it. It's not the best food for you. <laughs> As with most casseroles, it's kind of a comfort dish. On a, on a semi-cold evening, have your, have your weird spaghetti casserole and sit there and enjoy yourself, right? Sometimes you need a little with me. I'm not a snow person, but just the weather seems weird. 
Did any of you watch the Oscars? I don't watch that show anymore. Maybe I'll put out, I, I usually do a video about my favorite movies from the previous year, so maybe I'll do that. But, uh, I don't want to go into a rant or anything, but I was not happy that, uh, Jane Fonda presented one of the awards. Ugh, anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But whatever. Live and let live, I suppose. We, we all have our pet peeves with famous people, don't we? <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one. <laughs> I know it's usually with political figures, but sometimes it's with regular people who put themselves into political situations. That's all I got to say about that. That Well, you know that that's not true. I have a lot to say about it, but I'm not going to say it on here. So... I'm, I'm really tired, I like, yesterday I got up really early in the morning and I stayed up late at night, and then, so, I slept in today, and then, I'm still tired, I might take a nap, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm hungry, so I should probably eat something. <sighs> well, I finished... I finished reading American Gods by uh, Neil Gaiman, and it was really good. I liked it better than the TV show, and it had some interesting tie-ups at the end of the book, you know. I watched, I, I read the 10th anniversary edition, so the reason that's important is because he added some stuff at the end, like as appendices, but I think appendices, whatever, as extra stuff that he wanted to have in the book before, I think. So, it's one of those books that makes you think about a lot of things. Like, mostly to me, the way that... The way, it's interesting because he's... I think he's from the UK. I'm pretty sure he's from the UK. And he's writing about America. And he... At the time that he wrote this book, he had been living here five years. And I think part of what fascinated him was small town America. Well, he says in the in the beginning of the book, he talks about how he thought that he knew what America was like because, you know, they see American TV and they watch American movies. But what he thought America was like is not like that, which obviously, because that's Hollywood. But, you know... I'm sure we all think we know about other countries from watching movies, but you don't know till you go there. And he was fascinated with some of the small town life and how people are different in different parts of the country and um, the kind of melting pot uh, idea of what goes on here. There's little pockets of culture in different places and that kind of fascination and I think love for what's going on in America, you know, for the American experience really shows through in that book. It doesn't show so much in the TV show, you know. There's more of, I don't know what the word would be. I, I don't want to say sentimentality because that makes it sound superficial. There's just more of it in the book than there is in the TV show. I still like the TV show. It's interesting because you get to... It's got some good actors in it and it's got interesting effects. And it's got stuff... There's stuff in the TV show that's that's not in the book. So... But... Yeah, the book I, I really enjoyed. I gotta figure out a new book to, to read. I almost said to watch. <laughs> I usually pick... So how I usually pick a book you books each year. I don't read a lot of books. I only read about between 12 and 17, and I hardly read any last year. But I usually pick one really short book and one really long book, and by really long book I mean like 700 to 1200 pages. So I, I always feel like the short book and the lar large book <laughs> balance each other out. And then I pick at least one non-fiction book, and at least one popular book 
and I try to do at least one classic and at least one mystery because I like mysteries. I, I specifically, especially, love Agatha Christie novels. I have not read all of them yet, so she has quite, quite a few, quite many even uh, books. So that's what I usually do. And then I always try to get at least one of those books to be something that came out this year or the previous year. Because I feel like I have to keep up, but... I don't know. You don't know. The problem with that is it's hit or miss. Because sometimes, usually when you look at books that came out this year or last year, you're going to look at stuff that, or stuff that was popular. You know, that came out on, you know, was that on the bestseller list or everybody was talking about. And, um... That's not always going to be something that I'm interested in, you know. A lot of it's drama. I don't mind drama if the story is interesting, but I'm not really into, like, romance fiction or anything like that. I do like the small town stuff, which is why I've really, I've always liked Fanny Flag books. I don't know if you've ever read Fanny Flag, but, um. There was a movie based on one of her books called uh, Frank, Fried Green Tomatoes, so she's the, she's the writer of the book that that's based on. It's called, that book's, I've never read that book, it's called Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. But I've read, I don't know, like five of her books. I probably should read some more. Well, I'm home, so that is it. I know it went long this time. But, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I hope you're having a good day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.